Hey, this instructional video is about graphing quadratic functions in intercept form. The general intercept form is written as y is equal to a times the quantity of x minus p times the quantity of x minus q. So let's get started right away. First identify the coefficient a, which is in this case 1 over 3. And since it's a positive, we all know that parabola is going to go open upward. Now we're going to use the Algebra 1 skill to find the x-intercepts by using the zero product property. And how that works is, we set each of the binomial x plus 4 and set that to 0. And the second one is x plus 1, set that to 0. When you solve for x, what you in fact get is, when the y is 0, the lines, the parabola will go through the x-intercepts at negative 4 and negative 1. So given that information, we could go ahead and graph the parabola already on the coordinate plane. So one of the intercepts is going to be at negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And the second point is going to be at negative 1. And you can see that if you count inward from the two intercepts, the middle, the axis of symmetry, is going to be at 2 and a half. So let's go and indicate the axis of symmetry with the dashed line over here. And so the x value of the axis of symmetry is actually at negative 5 over 2. 2 and a half, that is. Now let's find the vertex. Since this is the x over here, to find the y value for vertex, you simply substitute for all the x's with negative 5 over 2. So here we have y is equal to 1 third times the quantity of x, which is now 5 over 2 plus the 4 times the quantity of another negative 5 over 2 plus 1. Inside the first expression, the parentheses, the common denominator is 2. So that could be written as negative 5 over 2 plus the denominator is 2. That means 2 times the 4, the numerator has to be 8. The second one is negative 5 over 2. Again, the common denominator is 2. So in this case, the denominator 2 times the whole number 1, numerator becomes a 2. Evaluate further, what we end up with is negative 5 and positive 8 is 3 over 2. And here, negative 3 over 2. And this finishes up by simplifying the 3's off. We end up with negative 3 on top. Four time, uh, 2 times 2 is 4. Here's the y value. So negative 3 over 4, so if this is negative 1, negative 3 over 4 is just before that. Here is the vertex. Vertex is at negative 5 over 2x and negative 3 over 4y. And just like we predicted in the beginning, since it's positive, the coefficient a is going to open upward. And there you have it. Now, for some of you perfectionists, you may want to also determine what the y-intercept is. Well, the parabola crosses the y when the x is 0, so let x equal 0. And we're going to substitute dx back into the original function to find the y. So y is equal to negative uh, one-third times x, well, here, x is 0, plus 4, and 0 plus 1. Evaluate further, we get 4 times the 1. So the y value, or the y-intercept, is actually 4 over 3. Okay? So the y-intercept is 4 over 3. Therefore, we have answered the axis of symmetry, negative 5 over 2, x-intercepts, which is at negative 4 and negative 1. We indicated the vertex, which is the coordinate right here, and we went further, even to find the y-intercept. Now, why don't you do the second one? Okay. Now this equation, right from the beginning, we notice that the a value is a negative, negative 1 over 2. So we know that since it's negative, the parabola is going to open downward. We realize by using the zero product property, the vertex 
or the two x-intercepts are actually the inverse of the given constants over here. So in this case, the, the place where the p and the q should be is the opposite of negative 3, so it's 3 and negative 2. That's going to be the x-intercepts. So we could go and draw the parabola already from that point on. And here's what it looks like. Here's 3, 1, 2, 3. It will go across on there. And negative 2, 1, 2. If you count inward from those two points, you'll see that the x is a symmetry. 1, 2. It's right there at 1 half positive, just off the y-axis. And since it's going to open downward, we need to find the maximum point. Okay? So once again, the axis of symmetry is 1 half. X is 1 half. So let's go and substitute 1 half into those axes to find the vertex y value. So here we have y is equal to negative 1 half times 1 half minus 3 times 1 half plus 2. Then we have 1 half outside. Common denominator here is 2. So if there's a denominator 2, then 3 must become 2 times 3 is 6 over 2. And here the denominator is 2 again. Denominator is 2 times the whole number 2 is 4 over 2. So inside we have 1 over 2 minus 6 over 2 is negative 5 over 2. 1 over 2 plus 4 over 2 is 5 over 2. Unfortunately, nothing simplifies here. So we have negative 25 over 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And it's just visually, if I make them to a mixed number, 8 goes into 25 without going over about negative 3 and 1 eighth. But here's the y value. So the vertex is I'm sorry. It's negative, negative is positive. Phew, that was close. So three. One, two, three. Right there is the vertex. Vertex is gonna be at one half and twenty-five over eight positive. Thank goodness. So I could go ahead and draw the parabola. And that satisfies the x-intercept at negative 2 and 3. X is a symmetry, which is 1 half, and the vertex coordinate, which is 1 half and 25 over 8. Now, for those perfectionists, what is the y-intercept? Well, again, that's when the x becomes 0. So all we have to do is take the original function again and substitute the x with a 0 and evaluate. So we have negative 1 over 2 times negative 3 times 2. Let's simplify here. 2 cancels out. So negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. So I try to draw it off scale, but this is supposed to be there. Let's make a huge point and say y is 3. Ta-da! There you have it.